basketball basics and uh, we're going to start off by talking about the basing and the base installation and base materials. Um, a technique that's really become popular is using this clean stone or open graded stone. It's also called uh, three quarter clear, but it's a number 57 limestone or 57 angular. This stuff requires very little compaction, so it's very handy. So once you dig out your trench, you compact your subsoils, you put this stuff in here and give it a light, uh, light duty or light amount of compaction, and you're good to go. It's really a great thing. Now look into all this stuff a little more. It's just kind of a brief overview of it, but it's really handy. You can also use for your base this dense graded material, which it's got uh, the three-quarter stone in it plus these fines though and it requires a lot of compaction effort so you're going to need to get that in there on top of your compacted subsoils uh, ideally you want to put in a geofabric a woven geotextile in there too to separate the base from your soil you're going to uh, need compaction to compact this or you're going to need a compactor rather to compact this dense graded base very thoroughly uh, generally with a small compactor the size of a push mower you can only put down about an inch and a half of this dense graded base at a time with the proper moisture content it needs to be wet enough that it kind of balls together but not so wet that you can squeeze water out of it uh, this is too dry currently because it's not wadding up or balling up should be like lumpy oatmeal um, with that said you want to get that stuff compacted under properly get it in their level you always want to have a minimum of six inches of embedment of block uh, so you know if this were our wall we were building we'd uh, have this course of block buried in dirt buried in the soil and then we'd build our succeeding courses up from there um, so back on the on the uh, the basing so we're going to get our base perfectly level with this stone whatever base we choose we might screed out a little bit of uh, like a number nine grit it's a really fine grit uh, there's no dust in it or anything like that and uh, screed that out so that it's perfectly level and then set our block right on top of that uh, we're going to build up our block a few other basic things is you want to make sure your your vertical joints your running bond joints never align so you always want them to be offset by at least half or no more than one third or I'm sorry no less than one third so you don't want this joint here to be like right here that doesn't provide uh, good bridging of each block course to course to course um, we always backfill with a minimum of 12 inches behind the wall with this three-quarter clean stone no fines in it no dust we want it to be free draining that's one of the most important things about retaining walls is the is the footing or the basing the level pad leveling pad they call it or and and is the uh, and the backfill the drainage minimum by spec is 12 inches of drain stone back behind it we shoot for 18 inches personally as a company from us uh, but any more you can do the better but it adds cost to the project so you want to keep that in mind so with that said uh, we get that that there once you reach the top you want to uh, use a, uh, a geofabric, like a, uh, like a non-woven geofabric, to separate the topsoil from your drain stone. You want about 8 to 12 inches of really a, a non-permeable uh, type of soil that's not going to allow water to pass through once you backfill. And you're going to want to swale up there so water passes around the backside of your retaining wall. This is an example of geogrid. This is a uniaxial geogrid. Uh, it means the uniaxial means it has one direction of strength in it, as opposed to this biaxial, which has two directions of strength in it. It's made to be as strong one way as it is the other. In this case, it's just a uniaxial. It's laid and sandwiched in between the block layers like this and for whatever the prescribed distance back is per the engineering. Generally, the, the rule is if they say four foot of, uh, of geogrid, you, it's counted from the face of the wall back. So what this geogrid does is in prescribed amount of layers per the design, it ties this whole area together as one mass of uh, structure and mass of uh, you know retained earth you know segmental retaining wall stand or and then the acronym for that is SRW segmental retaining wall so we've got a great layout there and uh, geogrid and if any wall generally any wall over four foot requires geogrid but again that's going to be an engineered thing be sure to talk to your suppliers uh, and uh, reputable people around for any design tips and engineering techniques like that uh, anything over three foot they say requires engineering Talk to your local people in your area uh, about what the rules are there and go from there. But these are a few basic tips on retaining wall construction. I hope you enjoy.